Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that assassinating Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah became an essential condition for Israel to achieve its war goals. In his first public remarks since the killing, Netanyahu said that the killings of top Hezbollah commanders was not enough and that he decided that Nasrallah also needed to be killed. The United States, on the other hand, said that it fully supports Israel's rights to defend itself against Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthis and any other Iranian-supported terrorist groups. Now Israel says it has sounded sirens in Jerusalem following a missile launch from Lebanon into Israeli territory. Remember, this is an expected escalation after Israel targeted and reportedly killed Hezbollah chief Nasrallah in Beirut. My colleague Ghazali, in fact, spoke to uh, Drew Michael, the scholar from Center of Study of Ethnic Account Conflict at Queen's University, Belfast, and a fellow at the Tahrir Institute as well for Middle East policy. Listen in to what he had to say. Joined here by Dr. Andrew Mikhail. He's a scholar of cent at the Center for Study for Ethnic Conflict at Queen's University in Belfast. Uh, Dr. Mikhail, my first question is to you about the just confirmation coming in from IDF that Hassan Nasrallah, the Hezbollah Secretary General, has been assassinated. Uh, Hezbollah aligned media still continues to refute those reports. How do you see the initial repercussions of this? The initial implications are that. Um, this strike was reportedly ordered from the headquarters of the United Nations. And in so carrying out this attack, six apartment blocks uh, were flattened in capital city of Beirut. Um, this undoubtedly has caused significant loss of innocent life, um, which is probably tantamount to a war crime. Um, on the wider political question, um, and I wanted to head up the fact that this has cost innocent human life and has been most likely um, carried out with the UK and knowledge of key Israeli allies. The wider political question is what comes next. Yeah. If Hassan Nasrallah has indeed been killed, um, he is a very um, prominent figure in the Middle East. He's a very prominent leader, um, very noteworthy for his charisma and for his regular appearances talking to supporters. This will be a huge blow to the organization and one that is likely to carry out significant um, reverberations for its key allies in Syria and Iran and also in Lebanon. And one that is likely not to go unanswered in some capacity. To what capacity Hezbollah has the opportunity to strike back at Israel considering the last week has shown that its capacity um, to retaliate to the same level that Israel uh, can enact violence in Lebanon is uh, much, much less. So where do we go from there? It's hard to say. We stand at a precipice between a widening of this conflict throughout the region or hopefully um, a throttling down and a de-escalation. So, uh, but all the smoke is clear on this front when the Western experts and experts of Middle East were arguing that perhaps Israel is not interested in a full-blown war. But the way it has executed Hassan Nasrallah or the other civilians who have been killed in the last one week or so since the Pager explosion, more than 700 people have been killed. And all this while, the United States and all the other global leaders, be it France or UK and all, have extended their ironclad support to, you, to Israel. Uh, despite verbally saying that uh, they all want a pause to the war, they want a pause on the arms shipment and all, but they continued supporting Israel for this execution as they call that Israel has every right to defend itself. So how do you see the role of these global leaders in future, not just the immediate future, that what happens now in the Middle East, as Secretary Blinken was quoted saying yesterday in a press briefing that perhaps uh, from now onwards the, the, the line of action which the Middle Eastern players will take will decide their fate or future. But what about these leaders who have wholeheartedly been supporting Israel in its, what they call the war against terror? You're absolutely correct. These leaders have um, done nothing to stop um, credible claims of genocide in Gaza, credible claims of war crimes in Gaza, and now credible claims, multiple credible claims of war crimes in a sovereign state that is also 
as a sovereign state, has a right to protect itself. If the rules were reversed and Lebanon or Hezbollah, uh, um, let's take the, the current actors as they are, were to carry out a strike in Tel Aviv to take out Benjamin Netanyahu, a man who has had an arrest warrant issued by the International Criminal Court for war crimes to kill him, but yet killed maybe 100 or 50 innocent Israelis, we would rightfully see condemnation of this from the West. But we have a double standard. We have the international liberal order put in place in the aftermath of World War II in a bid to regulate these kinds of actions. But yet Israel is not being regulated. And in fact, it continues to be materially supported by Western actors, by its key allies, who continue to throw up their hands and say, we are unable to control Netanyahu, as the EU boss said today. You've had a year of understanding to what extent Israel is willing to go in Gaza. None of what has happened in the last week should be a surprise. So, as you said, if they really wanted to um, rein in Israel, they would stop materialist supporting Israel through sales of weapons and support and aid.